let's continue a little bit. Let's kind of prove, we said, okay, the so-called volume-free energy term is a function of so-called uh, undercooling, okay? Data GV, how do we define data GV? We define data GV as the so-called volume-free energy change liquid term minus the solid term. Liquid term minus solid term, make sense? And we said we want to prove that it's a function of LV times data T over TM. What does TM mean again? Melting temperature, data T is so-called undercooling. If we are below the T, data T is we define as positive, which is TM minus T, okay? This is what we are going to prove. We are going to prove this, and uh, we define data T as what? Look at here. We define data T as TM, your melting temperature, minus T is your actual temperature. And our actual temperature, when we are dealing with solidification, we are typically below the melting temperature, which means data T is, as we deal with it, always a positive number, right? Make sense? And based on this plot, the data GV is a positive number. And does this trend just roughly make sense to you? Based on this plot, <laughs> right? The la the further away you are from the melting point, the larger this drop. And it seems to be linear. And here it's just we just want to prove this relationship. Okay? Now let's first consider what happens at TM, at the melting temperature. At equilibrium melting temperature, the data GV term, do you see that term? The GVL minus GVS should be what? At equilibrium temperature, the two difference should be zero. Of course, here we are assuming that they don't change in density. It's the same density. Otherwise, this doesn't uh, uh, satisfy. Assume no density change. At uh, so-called equilibrium melting temperature Tm, the data GV term is defined as liquid term minus solid term is zero. And we write it uh, the, the other way, minus w w solid term minus liquid term. Do you see that? It's zero. And we can write as liquid term minus solid term or minus of solid term minus liquid term, okay? Then when we consider solidification, solidification, which is your final state? Solidification, solid phase is your final phase, final state, right? Liquid is your initial state. We can rewrite the inside the bracket as minus of data H term from L, initial state L to final state liquid minus T, what temperature we are dealing with? Melting temperature times delta S. Delta S is also from initial state liquid to final state solid. Make sense? So it's just that we are rewriting this. And then from here, we are going to get the data GV term. The so-called volume-free energy is minus data H L minus S minus minus would become positive TM times data L S from liquid to solid. Make sense? It's just a mathematical manipulation. Then let's consider the so-called uh, latent heat. Latent heat. The enthalpy change in solidification. The enthalpy change. How do you define enthalpy change? It's data. Enthalpy is for data H, right? Enthalpy change in solidification, which is data H solidification going from liquid to solid. Going from liquid to solid, enthalpy change, the heat change. Okay. Going from liquid to solid is what? Absorbing heat or releasing heat? 
releasing heat. So as a result, the enthalpy change is positive or negative. It's a negative value. That's why we put it negative in front of so-called the latent heat, because heat we consider as a positive. So negative heat is the amount of heat that you released going from liquid initial state to solid final state. And from this equation, from the where I'm pointing this equation, the data H term, I have a negative sign here, data H term would just be the Tm times what? Entropy term, make sense? Entropy term from liquid to solid. Now let's consider it. Data H term is from liquid to solid is a negative value. Okay, my latent heat is positive value, so I have to put a negative sign. My Tm is positive or negative? Positive, but entropy, the degree of randomness or disorder, liquid, solid, which one is higher? Liquid has more disorder. As a result, the data S term from liquid to solid is decreasing, right? Which means the change is negative, right? Decreasing, right? From liquid to solid, the change is negative. So the temperature term is positive, but the data S term is negative. So you see the consistency. Make sense? So we have this. Now, as a result, we can rewrite the data S term. Data S from liquid to solid is negative of latent heat per volume divided by melting temperature. Make sense? And then we are making assumptions again. We assume the enthalpy change and the entropy change, they do not change with temperature. Which means, okay, whether the solidification happens exactly at the melting point or slightly below, the, the net enthalpy change don't really change much, at least. And then the entropy change, the degree of order change from liquid to solid also don't change much with temperature. As a result, then we are talking about at temperature T, which is what? Now temperature T is data T below what? Temperature T is data T below melting temperature. Data T is defined as Tm minus T below the melting point, the volume free energy chain. Now we are dealing, go back to the volume free energy change data G V, but now it's at T below, at data T below the melting point, is L V. Why? Because we assume the enthalpy term does now change with what? Temperature? That's from here, right? The LV term, negative data H, which is LV term, plus instead of Tm, now we should have what? T times the entropy term. Okay, now let's plug our entropy term. What is our entropy term? Entropy term we said is latent heat divided by melting temperature with a negative sign here, right? Now we put this term into data S term. Now you expand. The LV term, LV term we put outside. Do you see that? We have LV here, latent heat. We also have LV here, latent heat. So we can put LV as a common factor. Tm put that in the denominator. Now this one I should have Tm in the numerator minus what? Minus T. Okay. And uh, remember, what is Tm minus T? What is Tm minus T from here? It's just uh, our defined so-called undercooling, right? And so without we are going to have data T over Tm times LV. Okay, so this is kind of how we prove the so-called volume free energy term. This job per volume from liquid to solid is a linear function of what? Data T on, on the cooling for a given system because for a given system, what would be fixed? T 
TM, melting temperature, as well as the latent heat, right? Okay, so this is what we have. That's kind of like how we proved it roughly, quickly. And uh, what it shows is that so-called volume-free energy difference from liquid to solid, this positive value of the so-called driving force for solidification increase linearly with undercooling. Okay, so that's kind of what, what we are.